Hi everyone, uh, here's a tutorial on how to calculate the net charge for an amino acid. In this tutorial, I'll be go over, going over an example question, and the example question is shown above. What is the net charge of glutamic acid at pH 6? So in class, you learned that the pKa of the carbox group is 2, and the pKa of the amino group is 10, and this will always be fixed for every amino acid. Um, for glutamic acid, they'll give you the R group, so the R group pKa is 5. And below, I've sh shown the structure, which you don't actually need to calculate the net charge, but it is nice to see um, what the structure is and what group we protonated and deprotonated. So I like to follow four steps in order to calculate charge of a group on the amino acid. And here we will be going over the four steps for the amino group, um, carbox group, and the R group. So step one, uh, you should ask yourself, at pH 6, will most of the amino group be protonated or deprotonated? Um, so remember that the pK of the amino group is 10 in a, P, in a solution with a pH of 6. So remember that pH, if pH is less than the pK, then most of the molecules will be protonated. If the pH is greater than the pK, then most of the molecules will be deprotonated. So in this example, uh, the pH is less than the pK, so most of the molecules will be protonated. So moving on to step two, the next question to ask yourself is, will the protonated or deprotonated form of the amino group possess a charge? So uh, it's a giveaway that the NH3+, plus, uh, the protonated form, will possess a charge, and it will be a positive charge. Uh, and that brings me to the third step. So the third step is, what is the ratio of protonated to deprotonated molecules. So remember the pH scale is logarithmic, so moving up or down one unit is 10 times more or less protons in solution. So if a, the amino group has a pK of 10 and in a, in a solution of pH 6, then you are moving four units um, which would equal 10, 000, 10 to the power of 4, which is 10,000 molecules will be protonated uh, for every one molecule that is deprotonated. So this is important because this brings me to my fourth step on actually calculating the charge for the amino group. So here, remember that the protonated form possesses the positive charge, so you'll take that number, 10,000 and you'll divide it by the total number which is 10,001 molecules and that will give you 99.99% uh, which will round to 1. So the amino group in, at pH 6 will have the charge of plus 1. And in this next slide I'll just summarize all four steps. So step number 1 will most of the amino group be protonated or deprotonated at pH 6 and in red I've highlighted the answers so the answer is protonated. Does the protonated or deprotonated form possess a charge? So the protonated form possesses the positive charge so possesses a charge and it's positive for the amino group. What is the ratio of a, uh, protonated to deprotonated? So that's 10,001 and to calculate the net charge you take the protonated form, the positive, and divided by the total number, and you get plus one for the amino group. So we can follow these same steps um, with the carboxyl group and then the R group. So here I'm just going to give you the summary slide for each one. I can, I'll let you go over each step independently yourselves and let me know if you have any troubles with that. So for the carboxyl group, remember the carboxyl group has a pKa of 2. So if the pKa is less than the pH, then most of the groups will be deprotonated. Um, does the protonated or deprotonated form possess a charge? So here 
the CO minus, so the deprotonated form possesses a negative charge. What is the ratio? So using that exact same way we calculate the ratio for the amino group, um, the ratio will actually be for every one protonated carboxyl group, there'll be 10,000 deprotonated, and that will give us the overall charge of negative one for the carboxyl group. Now moving on to the glutamic acid R group. So the R group possesses a pK of 5. So at a pH of 6, um, so the pK is less than the pH. So most of the molecules will be in the deprotonated form. Does the protonated or deprotonated form possess a, a charge? So the deprotonated form, CO minus, possesses a negative charge. Uh, so what is the ratio? So here we're moving one unit away, so there's one unit less protons in solution, so therefore the ratio will be one molecule, one protonated molecule for every 10 deprotonated side groups, R groups. And to calculate the net charge, what you take is the 10, and you divide it by the total number, 11, and you'll get negative 0.9 uh, charge for the side group. And that brings me to the final slide. So what is the net charge of glutamic acid? So then I would take the sum of all three groups, add them together, and that will be the net charge. So plus one for the amino group, minus one for the carbox group, and negative 0.9 for the R group would equal a net charge of negative 0.9. So please leave your comments on the form if you like um, this tutorial and I could do more in the future. Just let me know what you think. And if you have any more questions or comments, uh, don't be hesitant to ask them on the form.